Boy, Trick Daddy Dollars, and this is another episode of Bitch, I Got My Pots. Today, I got a closer personal friend of mine, somebody that you may be familiar with. He's a red nigga out the game. Y'all already know what time it is, but the day when we're gonna be cooking, I'm gonna be cooking breakfast. I'm gonna do a breakfast that you probably never heard of. Something that if you had to be from the South, you'd be familiar with, because a lot of people from North ain't really familiar with this. Now what I'm cooking today is smothered pork chops, grits and eggs. Now you notice on this on this particular meal, I'm only using Sunday seasoning. If you ain't got your Sunday seasoning, you can go online and order it right now. If they ain't got none in stock, that's kind of shit selling fast. So buy a couple of them when they do come back on stock, all right, on sale. And if you ever in the Miami area, make sure you go by Sunday's Eatery, a place where you can get a Sunday meal six days out the week. And it's the home of the original fried ribs. So for y'all who don't know what I'm doing right here, I'm dipping these pork chop in some buttermilk. That's gonna give them that real extra crispy delicious flavor and the only season i use was sunday seasoning a season that you can use on any and everything but your girl you give up yeast infection out this world your, your, your throat will be soaked for the rest of your life you do that it's very important to know when you fry a pork chop you don't want the grease too hot because you don't want to burn them it's in a cut pork chop it's the best pork chop. The rest are too cheap for my blood. I ain't never been that tight. Now, while the pork chop is cooking, I got the water already hot for the grits. It's very important that you have your water already hot when you put your grits in there. Already hot. And like I told y'all before, this is my last damn time telling you, Sugar don't go in no damn grits, man. Little salt, pepper on the top, and butter. Maybe cheese, but sugar don't go in no damn grits, man. And I ain't gonna keep telling y'all that. Now, I got my eggs here. When you scramble the eggs, it's very important that you scramble them in the bowl or a cup. You can't scramble them in a pot. So it look like a bunch of throw up. You don't want to do all that. And I don't like hard scrambled eggs. If you want hard scrambled eggs, go to your grandmammy house and get that. We don't do no foolishness right here, not on this show. Make sure these eggs are scrambled pretty good. Eggs is scrambling, the pork chop is cooking. I got the grits on the stove. I'm gonna stir that up and make sure them things is cooking real good. I don't eat greedy grits, I don't eat lumpy grits, and don't eat no damn sugar in my grits. Y'all stay tuned, I'll be right back. The bitch I got my pot. another episode of Trick Daddy's Bitch I Got My Pots. Although this next artist has spent a lot of his career incarcerated, this hasn't stopped him from earning himself at least three platinum albums, coining himself the Project Baby. But unlike back in the day, artists sell more singles than full bodies of work. So here are the top seven highest selling Kodak Black singles of all time in the United States to date. Number seven, Calling My Spirit. Released November 30th, 2018, and it went two times multi-platinum on November 13th, 2020. And this song was a banger, and Yak spoke on his wealth and the violent side of his lifestyle. Number six, Codeine Dreamin' featuring Lil Wayne. It was released on November 24th, 2017, and went two times multi-platinum on November 13th, 2020. And even though Kodak Black and Lil Wayne got off to a rocky start, after all Kodak Black's social media antics dissing Lil Wayne, even going back and forth with his daughter, Regine, at one point, the two still ended up releasing this single. 
Number five, horses featuring A Boogie with a hoodie and PMB romp. It was released March 31st, 2017 and went two times multi-platinum September 22nd, 2020. And this song hits differently when you're listening to it while you're driving. A vibe. Number four, No Flocking, released July 10, 2015. It went two times multi-platinum on January 9, 2019. And Cardi B's now diamond record and breakout single, Bodak Yellow, was derived from this song. Cardi B used his flow and kind of jocked the beat. And in 2018, Kodak Black was nominated for a Grammy with Cardi B for Best Rap Song, but they didn't win. Although every couple months, there is controversy surrounding the No Flocking and Bodak Yellow comparison. Kodak Black is always bringing up Cardi B saying he also gets paid from Bodak Yellow. So he's good. You get it? Bodak Yellow? <laughs> Number three, Rolling Peace featuring XXX Titashian. It was released August 18, 2017 and went three times multi-platinum on March 26, 2021. And this song was heat when it dropped and it's still a banger today. Number two, Tunnel Vision, released February 17, 2017, and it went six times multi-platinum on March 18, 2022. And this song was one of Kodak Black's most anticipated songs. He dropped a snippet on Instagram in late 2016, posting a video dancing to it in the studio with his brother John Wick, along with Jack Boy sitting in the chair in the background. It left fans fiending for the record to come out. And after waiting three months, the song finally dropped in February 2017. And it obviously did not disappoint. Number one, Z featuring Travis Scott and Offset. Released October 12, 2018, it went six times multi-platinum on February 25th, 2022. And this song reached number two on the Billboard Hot 100 back in 2018. But Kodak Black is not showing any signs of slowing down because his latest song, Super Gremlin, is tearing up the charts right now, peaking at number three on the Billboard Hot 100 as well. And remember, this list is not an opinion. It is based on album sales in the United States. Facts. Courtesy of the RIAA. My favorite song is Super Gremlin by Kodak Black. What's yours? Jump in the comments and tell us. Either way, I'm Tamara, and this has been another Top 5 on Trick Daddy. Bitch, I got my heart. Welcome back to Bitch I Got My Pots. And today, like I told y'all, we cook a smothered pork chop, grits and eggs. Y'all probably wonder why. Well, then, why is he cooking breakfast? Well, my next guest is a very, very popular, sometimes controversial, one of the first red niggas that I really rocked and kicked it with. DJ Envy for the Breakfast Club. That's why I'm doing this. Come on, DJ Envy. What's up, my boy? What's up, bro? What's going on, Envy? Looking good. I'm trying to get this thing right. Man, look, first of all, I want to tell you, I appreciate the love. You, Charlamagne, Angela Yee, y'all always show me love. And one thing about y'all always honest, but y'all don't get on me too tough. And I also want to let the people know that you and Charlamagne are honorable eater booty gang members. Absolutely. So y'all ladies know, no pee pee, no doo doo. This thing is spreading worldwide. <laughs> it's gonna be big when it get here and you don't wanna miss it. So what you got, what you got going on? Amy, tell the people what all um, you got going on. I got on. A, a book out right now called Real Life, Real Love, Me and the Wife. We've been together 27 years. Whoa. Married 20. That's and big. Uh, we talk about it. We talk the ups, the downs, the lefts, the rights, and how we still together. So we talk about it all, and we're very transparent in the book. We don't leave nothing out. Nothing out. Nothing. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Yep. If you're in a relationship and you don't have problems, then your relationship is phony. Because we are all imperfect people born in an imperfect world. And we have to learn and get to know each other. Some things that we find out about the people we love and be around, we find out different things about them every day. Absolutely. And it might take 20 some odd years for you to know everything about your woman. Yep. Remember, you can't kick no dick out their past and you damn sure can't keep it out their future, but you can make them happy. Because one thing I want y'all women to know, a man will love you, he will love to fuck you, but he'll never love the fuck out you if that's all he learned to do about mm -hmm. you. And the book is You and Your Wife. Yeah. Th that was smart. Yeah, so we, with some things we talk about from my side and some things we talk about from her side, right? So one of the, the biggest things that people talk about in the book is how we've been together, not only that. For the first 10 years that we were together, she was faking her orgasms. Whoa. 
Why are you laughing? That ain't funny. <laughs> no, but no, 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 no. I was talking about this to a, a bunch of females on the airplane the other day. They do it all the time, yeah. I found out. Yeah, yeah. But you got to think, this is when I met her when she was 15, I was 16. So I learned how to have sex from porn. So I go... But that, Jumping up and down. Exactly. But right. she's looking at me like, okay. But it wasn't it wasn't intimate. Right. And I had to learn that. You know what I mean? So we talk about it in the book how she told me it was an argument. And I thought I'm daddy long leg. I'm thinking I'm man dingo. You putting it down. You ain't doing nothing. I wasn't doing nothing. But we talk about that in the book and in a host of other things. So we really break down the relationship and how all relationships ain't perfect. You look online sometimes and it look perfect, but you know it ain't perfect. Y'all, so in other words, y'all started off in lust and ended up in love. And we started out as friends. And see, and that's, friends. that's unusual. Yeah. Because every time a girl tell me, well, let's be friends first, then she end up looking at me like, I'm bruh. I know I'm not bruh. What the fuck wrong with you? Well, she, well, we weren't bruh, but we were best friends. Like, she was, she hang out with me, we would go out. But this is a time when I was 16. Right. I had glasses and braces. I was five foot four. I was DJ Shrimp at the time. <laughs> oh, so, whoa. So I, went, I never heard of it. DJ Shrimp. <laughs> I was Shrimp. I was, Somebody <laughs> find me some pictures of DJ Shrimp. I need to see this nigga. So I was little. And so we were just friends. We just hang out and cool. And, you know, it started from there. And then it got to that relationship, that point where we became boyfriend and girlfriend and the rest of the system. When you, when you together for 27 years, can't nobody tell you nothing about that woman and nobody can't tell her nothing about you nothing as a man. Me. You know, a girl, girls used to always stay in my business. I told, and I told my wife, I was like, married women can't hang with a bunch of single women. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when women come and tell you their story, if, if they don't ask you what they think you should do, what they think she should do, or what, they, what do you think, they just want to vent, so let them talk. Cause it's hard to give somebody opinions about their own relationship. And a lot of people come to me asking for my opinion. Cause first of all, baby, you're not gonna tell me everything that went on. Not at all. You're not gonna tell me what you did, nope. what you were thinking, none of that. So I can't, I can't give you an opinion, but I know this. For a woman that's in a relationship to hang with, all her friends are promiscuous, mm-hmm. home wrecking, mm-hmm. side hoes, mm-hmm. who can't keep a nigga, ain't got a nigga, never had a nigga. She doing something she ain't got no business doing. Well you, well, you know, married women want to hang out usually with married people. <laughs> you know that, what I mean? That's and, safer and that's more healthier. Yes, I, I, I agree. But also, I ain't got a problem with bringing my wife with me. No, why? I ain't got a problem going to the club with my wife, going to the strip club, going to anywhere, going to the game. Because that's my, that's my friend, but that's my wife. You know, so people find it funny sometimes, but I don't care. People, you know, you know what the problem is with the world? What's that? Well, we can't never figure out. People spend more time worrying about other people. other people. Absolutely. We got kids killing each other. We got people that are shooting people at a high rate right now. Motherfucker will shoot you right now for nothing. Mm-hmm. I'm from the 70s. You died for a reason, for a cause. You got a pass when you killed certain things. Certain people got killed in broad daylight in front of witnesses and nobody never to this day testified against them or gave a statement because that person deserved to die. The 15 year old, 14 year old, 60 year old Johnny and James and Jeff, they don't deserve to die over an argument. They don't deserve to die over social media. And people these days need to go back to the tradition. Do y'all have kids? Yeah, six. Six kids. Y'all take a lot of pictures. Absolutely. Y'all need to go back and take the pictures, photo albums. Show your kids the growth. Mm -hmm. Show them pictures of you. Mm -hmm. Teach them that. Bullying is not bullying unless you got too much pride. Mm-hmm. See, you gotta you gotta teach them to struggle. See, you gave a lot of y'all post y'all kids report cards on social media when it when it's all age. Mm-hmm. But you post their clothes on there the first week of school. Mm-hmm. Then the second nine week when they fall out, we don't hear nothing about your kids. And they end up the shooter. And then they end up the the, the victim and now you on the news so I Oh, he was in it. If you know something, say something. He was a good kid. No, he wasn't. You let social media, the cell phone, you let that raise your kids. Right. You have to teach your kids. Your kids got to be scared of their parents, mm-hmm. the police, and God. Mm-hmm. And nobody else. And you got to have it where anything you talk about in your house have to stay in your house. Right. If your kids do something out of line, at the least, cuss they little bad ass out. Because, you know, teachers don't make a lot of money. Right. And a lot of parents are mad at they te- uh, mad at their kids teaching. You sending all this homework home, 
this lady make forty five thousand dollars a year, and if she don't go, if she don't get her money in the salary form, she got to look for a summer job during the summer. Right. And she got to put up with your child that you keep protecting, that you keep putting on a pedestal, and you don't know what the fuck this child is doing because the child don't even know you. Because you hand that child that tablet at the age of two years old. Mm -hmm. You hand them that cell phone at five years old and they go on, online and they see all these YouTube videos True, and all these, and they see all this shit and they believe this shit. And then you send them off to school to these teachers who are underpaid and expecting to put up with everything. You got a nerve to say, she don't like my kid. Yeah. See, I'm from the age when my parents had to sign the bottom of the, of the homework to make sure that they were helping. Right. And if you got them all wrong, your parents look like a dumbass if they signed the bottom of it. See, I'm from that era, and with our kids, we do the same thing. We make sure our kids know. And we try to push them and encourage them, but you know, that's another problem. A lot of people are not in their kids' life. No, they only be on their kids' life first day of school when they post that picture yeah. and graduation. Rest of the year, they don't know what that child's doing. Did you see some of the prom pictures? Yeah. That hit the internet mm -hmm. with these kids with these guns? Mm -hmm. I ain't even gonna say, I'm just gonna look at you like this. Man, everything you're doing, everything you've done, if to me, you were the, you were the, you were always the Skip Bayless of radio. Skip Bayless, okay. Yeah, because you're a little lighter than um, Charlamagne. <laughs> Charlamagne ain't far from a red nigga, but you were always the Skip Bayless of radio. He got radio. lighter, he was dark, he got a little lighter. What the fuck, he bleached? I don't know what he did. <laughs> oh shit. He said it was a, it was a affiliation of something, that's, a, I don't know. He got a little lighter. But I know what thing about it. On the Breakfast Club, y'all don't cut no corners, y'all don't no. bite y'all tongue. Y'all ask the questions that nobody's not gonna ask, that's why I fuck with you. Uh. But. You've always been the ones that always speak your mind. Yeah, That's absolutely. why I respect you yeah. and respect everything you do. Cause you speak your mind. And if you can't speak your mind in this world, then you ain't real. Now I'm gonna ask you why you putting the hot grease in the oven. I, I never, I seen a lot of things that people cook, but I ain't never seen nobody put the hot grease so in the oven. So I put the hot grease in the oven so I can smother these pork chops and at the same time, so I don't have to pour the hot grease in the sink and my mama catch me, uh, or my wife catch me and want to kick my ass because I always do something I ain't supposed to do. So I always pour the hot grease down the sink and every time a woman see me, they be like, boy, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it in the oven and then when the show off, I'm gonna pour that shit down the sink. I got you, I got you. So, you know, I used to pour it in the toilet. You flush the toilet and then you pour a little at a time and it, it dilutes it and then it goes right down the toilet. So now even what I'm doing right now, mm -hmm. I'm making homemade gravy. Okay. So what's in there? Flour and water. That's gravy? That's gravy. I'ma add a little caramel brownie to it to give it a little brown texture. Mm -hmm. And flavor. Don't add too much. And like I told you, Sunday season, shit go on everything, boy. Now, I know you probably said this a million times, but how did you learn how to cook so good? I learned how to cook, man, cause I grew up in the projects. I grew up in, in, in Goose in the project. I stayed in the project of Homestead. Mm -hmm. And I stayed in the Poker Bean project. Mm -hmm. And the projects, in the projects, we learned key rules. Like, lock my door, don't open it for nobody. Correct. And we learned that if we go to our friend's house and they finna eat, we gotta go home because if they mama offer us something, we have to say no. Right. If they mama say, you want something to eat? I have to say no, ma'am. My mama cooked, or I ate already, because mm -hmm. that's embarrassing to parents that they kids be going over people's house. And my mama be like, like, like I'm not feeding your ugly ass. Right. Right, so I would have to say no. And we learned to eat shit that, how these look new kids don't eat this and don't eat that. No, we eat everything. Yeah, no, that's that. And then, so what age were you when you ate able to fry stuff on the stove? When I, uh, like five, six, I've been frying since five, frying six. Frying chicken on the stove at five, six? Yeah, fried, well, the first thing I fried was bologna. Yeah, the bologna pop up. Yeah. And that ain't gonna pop you, but so, that, so that'll me, pop you though. Making pop. My mama popped me by that bologna, cause what, me and my sister made a bet. And I sucker bet at her. Mm -hmm. Cause she, she told me, she bet that I could not cook the bologna without it pop, without it bubbling up in the middle. Mm. She would. I won, I showed her ass. I hold it down with a spatula. Oh, oh yeah, all right. And she ain't wanna pay me. And so she punched me, and I hit in the head with a cup of ice, and my mama beat her ass. So, 
You still love your sister? I, but my mama have 11 kids. I love almost all of them. What about the other ones? My, my, I'm sick of this. I don't like, I don't, I don't like sorry people. Mm-hmm. Well, I can say I love them, I just don't like them. How about that? Oh, oh, okay, that makes sense, I guess. I don't, because you see, what it is, every, everybody some kin to you is not your family. Right, that's facts. You know, family live together, they care for each other, they pray together, they do a lot of things together. And they, they wish well on each other. They don't talk down on you, they don't feel like you owe them. Right. They don't show up with their hands out only. All right, I get it. You know what I'm saying? So, so one, of them, one of them asked for some money, you said no, and now they hate you. They say all type of crazy shit, then they don't help me. They, they don't help me with, like, all, like I'm Uncle Trick, right. so I'm responsible for all these nephews. My daddy got 12, my mama got 11. That's 40 something nieces and nephews. So I'm I'm the only one. It's always called Uncle Trick, so I just feel like majority of my brothers need to help me more. They need to be uncle too. And stop trying to put all the burden oh, and all the pressure on I me. I get it, I get it. So now with these pork chops, what, what flavor? You just use your, your the Sunday seasoning? Sunday seasoning on the pork chop, and I dip them in the buttermilk. Now I'm making a gravy here. Uh-huh. I'm gonna stick these here. Gravy is perfect. Perfect. That's that whip game. And we just know that you. We just know that your finger wasn't anywhere last night. Just the fact that you. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't stick your finger in. I just. All right. I, and plus, I'm not a stinky finger type. All right, cool. All right. I don't Thank like. I, I don't. I'm a, I'm a eat it, but I'm a CEO of president of Eater Booty Game. I don't, right. I don't play with my fingers. I use my mouth. All right. <laughs> Man, Trick, you sure you ain't do no Dirty Sanchez last night? No what? Dirty Sanchez. No pee pee, no doodle, see? Oh, my God. Hey, see, good. are you going to do something for me today, see? Man, you know, I'm going to do anything for you. Like you sure? Oh, no. So you going to eat one of these pork chops? You going to eat one of these pork chops? I'm going to just watch y'all eat. You don't eat pork? I don't eat any cartoon characters. Hey. So that's Porky Pig, that's Miss Piggy, I don't eat that. There's Nemo, so you eat fish? I mean, yeah, I eat fish, but not the Nemo fish. Okay. Oh, you eat mermaid. Yeah, I eat mermaid. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so when you at home, like, what you cook? Me, I'm a breakfast person. My wife do dinner, I do breakfast. So this is this is what I do. I do the eggs, the cheese, the French toast, the pork chops. This is what I do. But how you cook breakfast when you got to be to work at like 4 o'clock? Weekends, the weekends. I'm up at four o'clock in the morning. I usually don't have a chance to eat breakfast, so this is this is refreshing right now. Uh, this looks amazing, and I can't wait to try it. Wow, that's crazy. And I'm a skinny, fat person too, so I like to eat. So you live in what? You live in Jersey or Queens? I live in Jersey now. I moved out of Queens. Live in Jersey now. So you left Dominican Republic, then you moved to Queens. I'm not Dominican. I'm black. I don't know why people keep saying I'm Dominican. I can't speak Spanish. It's the only thing I know. Mira, mira, mira. I have a by. That's it. That's all I know. I don't know nothing I, else. I don't know no Dominican race. You ain't hear me say, this is this one of the first red niggas I was down with. The man is not Spanish, man. Hey, okay, my homeboy Donald say, oh, is he Puerto Rican? I got, I, I just... <laughs> My, and my parents is, is y'all complexion. I don't know how I'm so light, but they y'all complexion, which is crazy for Oh man, that's crazy. Now I'm, I'm gonna show you a trick. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you the, the trick about eggs. So, mm-hmm. so my trick on eggs is this. I use butter. Right. And margarine mix. Okay. Ooh. And what does that do? It's gonna make these eggs so amazing, you ain't gonna believe it. So you don't use pan? No, uh, pan is for baking, I thought. Nah, that's for eggs, too. I, I mean, well, uh, I, I, I was never a Pam dude. OK. You don't like Pam or Gina? Which one? <laughs> well, Pam was, Pam was finer than Gina. I always thought that. When I come right back, I'ma scramble these eggs. Let me show you every how to cook. Some real scrambled eggs, not no messy, dumb, stupid eggs. We're gonna talk a little bit more about the book. And we're gonna continue to entertain y'all right here on Bitch I Got My Pots. Y'all keep it locked. Uh-huh. I got my pots. Welcome back to Bitch I Got My Pots. 
I was telling Envy how to make some real scrambled eggs. That's a lot of damn butter. Well, and margarine. The, the, the and butter margarine. and margarine. Don't worry. All right. It's like baking soda. It's gonna get everything on straight drop right here. Okay. Wow. The eggs gonna be good and they're gonna be pretty. Now question two, how important is a pot when you're cooking? Meaning the okay. type of pot. The, the pots are very important according to what you're cooking. Okay. You don't want no cheap pots that stick and you don't want no pots that got rust in the bottom of it. That means you've been scraping them. So they make, nowadays they make a lot of good quality pots and certain pots are for stock. A stock is like a soup or a stew or something. Right. Those are the thinner pots, they get hot faster and they don't and, and they don't last as long but they get hot fast so you can go ahead and get get your boil on so the cast iron parts if you can see the bottom all scraped up it's time to let it go the cast iron pipes those are forever mm -hmm. all you would need the key to the cast iron pipes is to when you finish washing them mm -hmm. you oil them down you take a napkin and get some grease and you oil them down yeah, you good. see them eggs in there? I ain't doing too much. I don't want to do too much. Them real uh, eggs. Scrambling. Put a little. Now we got Gordon cheese we're going to use in this thing today. Put a little cheese in these eggs. It's all in it. It's all in the wrist, man. You ain't got to overdo it. Make sure they're not running. Because some people think if your eggs are pretty, they have to be running. You don't see no liquid in these eggs. Right. That's dope. Butter and margarine. It's time for us to eat. Let's do it. It's time for us to eat. So I, when, I, when you get back on the radio, I want you to let them know that boy do not play. What else you got going on? You got like another album coming out? Nah, just besides the book, of course, you know, we got the car shows around the country. The last one we did in Miami last year, we did it on uh, Christmas time. We had about 10,000 people. So the next one is uh, Father's Day weekend in Houston. Then we're doing July 8th in Atlanta. When then, you coming uh, back to Miami? Uh, December of this year. Okay. We do it around Christmas time. We give kids toys for, for Christmas for kids that can't afford toys and help parents out. So we do it during that time. I seen, I seen Trick got some toys. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna come get some toys from him now. Yeah. Ross said you got four cars now. You got to dispute that claim. Ross said, who got four cars? He said you only got four cars. See, Ross said that because Ross got 250 cars. <laughs> he got 250 cars. Ross is just boy. He buys stuff that he can't even drive. NASCARs, right. he can't drive. He got fire trucks that don't work. He horses got horses and shit. Horses and buffalo. Ross is just boy. So how many cars you got? Where you put all these damn cars? I got about uh, 15 cars right there. Uh, 15 that's, cars. That's a lot. That's a yeah. lot on insurance. That's yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I do cars. So they're write-offs. So they're write-offs so okay. write at, at the end of the day. What's the most expensive car you got? It's a Porsche 918. It's worth about 1.8. Huh? 1.8. <laughs> oh, shit. But cars for me are also investments, though. Right. So right. I paid 1.2 for it. It's worth 1.8. So those are the cars that I do. That's now, a good. That's a. That, that, I, now that that made sense. But I'm not Ross. Ross keeps his cars. I mean, if somebody offers, I'm gonna go. I let anything go. I sell anything with my wife and my kids. So if somebody come to me right now and says, "I want your watch," sound like so, me, Billy. You want my Don't shirt? So it's nothing that I can, nothing I care about. Well, what it's, you want for that? Well, what you want me to give me for this? Yeah, boy? that's how I am. And how many um, properties you got? Because two hundred and thirty-three properties. Say what? Yeah, two hundred and thirty-three properties. Wow. You gonna get picked up, man. Cause you ain't <laughs> properties. You, ain't, you gonna get they gonna pick your ass up because you ain't getting this for no one for the radio show. You got two hundred and thirty some properties. You the birdie man. Two hundred and thirty-three properties. Uh we got about, I would say about maybe three hundred tenants, four hundred tenants. So one building is a 70 building, so we bought a school, turned the school into a 70 unit building. So that's Damn. what we do all around the country. Detroit, uh, Patterson, New Jersey, Atlantic City. Entrepreneur Negro. That's right. Too expensive to buy in Miami, right? What you think? Miami's very expensive right now. Yeah. It was right in the beginning of the pandemic, it was good. But right now, everybody's using their money. But it's, with, the, with inflation going up and the interest rates going up, you're going to see a lot of people losing their homes. You're going to see a lot of foreclosures. And that's the time to attack. All right, so we're going to buy one. We're going to wait for you, and we're going to take over Miami. Yeah, the multi-units is good. And they got a couple of multi-unit buildings here in, the, in uh, Miami and Fort Lauderdale. Those are always good to grab. Okay. And there's, you know, a lot of overseas money. A lot of overseas people come up here and want to stay for a little bit. So that's that's where you get them from. Eggs and grits. You want eggs and grits? That's it, yeah. see? Eggs and grits. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Ooh, this look good. I'm going to try to butter and margarine as soon as I get home now. 
butter and margarine. You gonna take, you gonna taste them right there. You gonna see the difference. Every Saturday and Sunday, he making breakfast. Every Saturday and Sunday. But you work, man. You like, I'm talking about every time I see you working, work, yeah. work, work. Yeah. That's that's the problem with the world. Nobody wants to fucking work. Y'all gotta get y'all dumb ass up and go to work, yo. Damn. No, you ain't lying. Every time I, I'm tired of every time I go to a restaurant, it's gonna take an hour because there's three people working in there. Yeah, that's crazy. But nobody wanna start from the beginning. A lot of people have a, a hard time working for minimum wages or small But wages, minimum wage but, but done went starts. up now. But it started, but that's where we all started from. I started from telemarketing. I got paid minimum wage and I saved then got another job. I saved and got another job, but people, Automatically want to start with a high job because they see their favorite celebrity, their rapper, yeah. DJ, athlete doing this, and they feel like it's beneath them to do it. But we when all got to start. I somewhere. see when you start. You start from the. You work with Clue from the beginning. The ball. You work. I mean, you work your way up. Yeah. Wow. Y'all got like the number one radio show. Y'all got a crow. Mm -hmm. 122 oh. markets being. Wow. 122 markets. I need some shit like that. 122 markets, you, you, 230 you actually, properties, mm -hmm. and 13 cars. Mm -hmm. Just know if we so happy, if we so happy to get rep retribution of our 40 uh, acres in the middle, you ain't getting there. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't giving you them they gonna, You not gonna qualify. Nah, I want no pork. Oh, you don't want no pork. Nah, See, oh no man. Pork Only, uh, my man. See, I'm gonna be honest with you. What's up? Pork ain't kill nobody. Nope. Y'all just think different, y'all. Pork ain't did nothing to nobody. Pork ain't doing no time. Yeah. Man, y'all the eat a booty gang. I'm just over but here. But think chilling. about all the old people from the south that's in their 80s and 90s. That they just, eat yeah, that's pork. pork, and they eat it to this day. But the difference between back then is the food now is so processed that it's not really good for your body like that. Yeah, you can say that, but yeah. that's the same with vegetables too, though. They process the vegetables the same way. And they say they canned food. Yeah. See, let me get this this uh man, gravy off your you, plate. Thank you. You get that piece of plate. I don't know what the fuck you got. <laughs> so we go, we gonna eat this. We gonna try this. No, nah, but before we eat, oh, this look cold. Oh, my gosh, this we need something. something we, go, we need something for you before we eat. What you need? We need you to say a, a little short, a little grace over the food. Ah, come on. Put it in. Ah. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we are thankful and grateful to all be here together as brothers. We appreciate everything that you give us from our health to the friendship to us to just keep being stronger. We appreciate this food. Make sure you bless us. Make sure you make sure that we remain safe. Make sure I get back to New York to my family safe. Heavenly Father, protect us from all evil. Amen. Amen. Hey, lady. All right, let's do it. Man, you got a good voice, man. What's next? You gonna be a preacher, pastor, blood? No, he not gonna play. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Try this. Mm. Damn, these eggs is good, brother. I'm Some telling salt. you, man, the egg. Mm. They eat to the egg with the margin mm. in the middle. Bro, that was good money, too. Y'all thought it was a motherfucking game? Mm, which is amazing. You all right with this shit? Ain't no, Adam, Adam Gray says with no sugar in them. Amazing. Mm. You got some water right there too. Oh, you boy. Damn, it's good. Mm. Where you, where you, where you from? All you niggas out of St. Louis better stop putting that sugar in your goddamn grits. Oh, damn. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed, to the YouTube channel. It's, you want some sugar? Some sour? Yeah. It's time now to do so. Mm. Want a little something? Yes, yeah, sir. So what, what do you do? You gotta open it up. So what do you do for Christmas and Thanksgiving, Drake? I have to cook every fucking thing. Goodness gracious. For, for your whole family? Every day. 40 some people? If some people be saying, you want me to bring something? And it's always the motherfucker who can't cook. I be like, no, 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 I got it. <laughs> I cook everything. How many ovens and stoves do you have to cook for that? Well, I got people? double oven. And I got this thing stove. Mm. But it's bigger. And what I do is I cook my greens, mm -hmm. my rice, my beans, my sauce. I cook that that night. Mm -hmm. Put it on low. Then in the morning, put my turkey in the oven. Mm -hmm. I fry up two of my grills, so I'm barbecuing two. Damn. Who cleans all the pots after this? See, now it depends. Cause every time I cook, every holiday, right? Mm -hmm. 
My mama always get mad at me. Wow. Because mm. once people start eating, I'm gonna sneak up about that motherfucker. Right? <laughs> I'm gone. Oh, that's crazy. So the last one's there. Now that shit ain't good. See, see, I ain't gonna lie because after I eat this, I ain't washing no dishes. Damn. I'm going upstairs and watching the game, and I'm passing out. So you got six kids. Like, what you do for Christmas when you cook? That'd be crazy. Crazy. Oh, my wife cook. So what I do is after I eat, the game is on, I go to sleep. Damn. I go to sleep. I remember we was, we, 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 the favorite part of Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner to me was mm -hmm. the leftover ham. Mm. Mm. I put that ham in the, in the eggs in the next day, have it with waffles and, and French toast the next day. We put that bitch in some rice. Some rice. Let's see, my kids eat ham. They eat, my whole family eat pork. Mm. And my wife is, is West Indian, she Jamaican. So be jerk. Jerk turkey, jerk chicken, oh man. Mm. Hey, thank y'all for tuning in. Mm. Until next time, remember this. Bitch, I got my five. <laughs> Make sure y'all get that book too. Real life, real love. Best seller, sold out everywhere. That's right. Now this is the part of the show where we see what's cooking in your kitchen. I got my dog from Broward County, Gold Rush. And today's part is sponsored by the National Animal Therapy Day. Y'all hashtag dogs heal. What's up, Gold Rush? What's up, fool? You ready? Y'all ready to go, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. It's real tall. It's real tall. Real shit. Gold Rush. It's crazy how things could look so good from far When I really far from good From growing up in the hood To making it on 106 and par I would just kick out a different high To making it on the charts and Shout out to Trick Daddy For giving the young ninja a chance I'll forever be grateful for that Yeah, back with me and my two I ninja was grinding I was driving back and forth from Miami Back at the Broward Put in an hour just to get to my flowers They told me stick to producing They tried to hate it and die yeah. Had to put that working in the meantime Ended up on the lead single And featured on the album three times Bet that 10, 20 life is straight up Got my first big check then got kicked up That's around the time the iceberg I signed We got the cooking and made one of the biggest And just fuck the other side Mama, I made it on DJ Khaled out 19 years old, first rapper on TV out of Broward And I mean this with all due respect and you know that but this is way before Ace or a Kodak I've been more than patient, wait for my time to blow I'm just trying to get the keys and drive the boat Yeah, I stay down and stay ten toes I done did everything you could think of but some so I swear I mean I really have After all the years, all the tears It's been a long time coming Now that's what's cooking in our kitchen Bitch, I got my pots <laughs>